Hey everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to this first episode of Stevens Week in 2020 in this new decade. Uh, I'm kicking off the year here at CES, so I'm probably going to show you some things that I've seen here this week and I hope you're going to enjoy this first episode. Welcome everyone. SpaceX launched 60 new satellites for their Starlink project. Uh, they already have 120 satellites up there, so now a total of 180. In the next few months, they're going to be launching more and more satellites. And the goal of the Starlink project is to create an entire circle of satellites around the world that can give the entire planet broadband internet. It's one of the big, you know, creative projects of Elon Musk, and it's becoming more and more concrete every, every month now. Amazon and the car industry is becoming bigger and bigger. Amazon's auto is really, really important to them. And um, this week, for instance, you see that almost every car manufacturer is starting to work together with the Alexa voice capabilities. And the one that really stood out was Lamborghini, you know, the premium sport cars. Um, they announced that they're gonna have the full Alexa capabilities in their vehicles, so that is really, really cool. But next to the fact that Amazon is moving their voice system into existing car uh, manufacturers, they're also backing a company called Rivian. They've been doing this for a while, and Rivian is an electrical car company. And they announced this week that by the beginning of 2021, they will have more than 100,000 electrical vehicles that will do the last mile deliveries for, uh, for Amazon here in the US and they will create their own fleet to make sure that they can you know, own that entire process of the last mile. And that's gonna start with 100,000 vehicles at the beginning of 2021. It's finally here. Samsung launched this week the smart fridge that in my opinion is really a smart fridge. I saw it here this week at CES by the way. And it's a fridge that uses AI to detect what you have in the fridge. So they see what kind of vegetables you have, what kind of meat you have. And based on the content of your refrigerator, they make a menu so that you can see what you can actually make with the ingredients that you have. And if you're missing one or two items, you can instantly order them. It also has the recipe in there, so you can basically work together with your fridge to make sure that, one, that you eat everything that's in there, that you will eat the things that will go bad first, so the, the amount of food waste that you have will be reduced. And three, it's of course really, really cool that you can outsource the purchases of your day-to-day -day products to a machine like the refrigerator. And I know we've been talking about this for 10 years, but now I think we have a, a smart fridge that is really worth talking about and would be really cool to have in your own house. New results came out about the growth of Instagram and in 2019 for the first time the growth of active Instagram users has decreased uh, below 10%. Instagram grew with 6.7% in 2019, 2018 that was still 10% and of course the overall size that they have has become so enormous that it makes kind of sense that the percentages go down but still it shows that Instagram is becoming a saturated uh, product like Facebook is so I would not be surprised if Mark Zuckerberg will look more into copying TikTok if you look at the massive growth of that platform to make sure that they don't lose track with their Facebook platforms. Amazon has more plans to go into offline retail. An inst interesting case study is happening in India where they will work together with a company called Future Retail. And the goal is that uh, Amazon will be like the online channel of that offline retail store. So they will merge channels um, the offline retail stores will also change uh, their interior to make sure that packages can be picked up in an easy and an Amazon kind of way. So this is a new step where Amazon actually works together with a big retailer in a certain country. They use the existing infrastructure. That retailer doesn't build its own online capabilities, but they work together with the qualities and the processes that Amazon already has in place, where you kind of merge the best of both worlds. Question is, will this also happen in other markets? Will they go to South American markets, maybe some African markets? Will they proactively talk to some of those retailers to develop the same model? I don't know, but it seems like an interesting test case. So guys, this was my first episode of my weekly in 2020, filmed in Las Vegas this time. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Please share it with your friends, with your family, and I hope to see you again next week. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.